This is the ultimate tier list for which AI tool you should use. And I know it can feel like there's a new AI tool every week, but the last thing you want is to be left behind. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're using stuff that can move you forward, which is why in this video, I'm going to go through every one of these AI tools. I'm going to rank them from the very best down to the very worst and tell you which one is going to be right for you based on your particular circumstances. My name is Jack. I run a seven figure AI automation business, and I've tried every single AI tool you could possibly imagine. With that in mind, and grab that coffee and let's dive straight in. Now, the first tool we're gonna cover here is make.com. Now, make.com, if you don't know, is a no-code automation platform. We use it to automate business processes. You can build scenarios that look like this. It goes from the left to the right. We can have any trigger you can imagine, WhatsApp, Telegram, email, uh, a webhook. And basically it can do loads of cool automations and think of it like connecting anything to anything else. This is like the glue, the WD-40. And with it, you can do incredible things. I run a community of thousands of people that use it to make money. I've seen business owners automate and save tens of thousands of dollars. I myself have built a business on no-code platforms. The thing what this actually does, guys, is just lets you automate stuff. Now, Make in particular is a really interesting one. It's got a beautiful design interface. And if you're a complete beginner, it is an incredible platform to get started. So it's got this great kind of drag and drop where you can come down here, you can select modules, enter them in, you can kind of pick the thing that you want it to do. It goes from left, it goes from right, and it's very, very beginner friendly. You can download scenarios, you can import blueprints, you can do many different things. In terms of the price, it's actually completely free to get started. So you can build, as you can see here, a thousand operations a month. It has over 2000 apps. What do I mean by apps? Well, we can connect to things like YouTube, to your Google Drive. We can send off requests. We can connect it to RSS feeds. We can do many, many different things. So for a complete beginner, Make is very visual, it's very intuitive, and it kind of makes good sense. That said, the thing about Make.com is that as your operation scale up, so as you use it more often, the price can very quickly quickly increase. Now, you've probably seen these things around AI agents, right? You're probably hearing it everywhere. Make has AI agents, and functionally speaking, it can do exactly the same as Appium, as NATM. That said, it's very embryonic on the platform. They're just getting started, and it has some limitations. You can't really see what it's doing. You can't build it out and connect it perhaps as easily as some other platforms, making it a little bit more difficult to do. And then with Make.com, as you get kind of more complicated and complex, some of the troubleshootings and the nooks and crannies aren't necessarily as helpful as they could be, meaning that when you get to an advanced level, yes, you can fix it, but there might be other platforms that make it just slightly easier to do that. So the TLDR of it is Make is an incredible platform. Most businesses are built on Make. I've sold so many myself and I've helped so many people do it, so it is super functional. But if you are a complete beginner, I would recommend that you start with a platform like Make.com and then functionally, it can pretty much do anything you imagine. And because of those reasons, I have to put Make on the A tier. Now, the next tool we're gonna to talk about is similar to Make, but is different in a few key ways. Of course, I'm talking about Zappy. Now, to give you some context on this very quickly, I call this the AI Automation Power Cube. I just wanna give you a frame of reference, the chessboard to understand what I'm talking about for all the tools in this video. Typically speaking, full AI operating systems, these full cool builds have a couple of components. We have the AI, that's like your chat GPT, your Claude, your Gemini, the brain, the intelligence, the operations. We have these no-code platforms. That's like Make, Zapier, NHF. This lets us bring in all the apps and connect things together. Think of it as like your back end. Think of it as like the glue that lets you do anything you want to. We have our databases, which is where we store information, our tables, our Google Sheets, our Excel spreadsheets type of thing. And then we've got our beautiful front end, our livables, our bolts, our software. What we're talking about here is Zapier, which is the automation branch of it. Now, Zapier functionally, where it really stands out is the fact that it has, as I sort of explained, you can see, as opposed to it being linear left to right, it actually goes from top to bottom. Visually, it's not quite as engaging. So it kind of naturally appeals to people who kind of a bit more process oriented. That said, guys, it's actual connections in terms of the number of apps it natively integrates to is significantly larger. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a long period of time, you'll know that it doesn't matter whether or not these platforms connect to different platforms because we can do beautiful things like HTTPS requests so we can actually connect to them ourselves. That said, if you're a beginner and you want to hit the Slack button and connect to Slack or hit this and connect to that, Zapier is absolutely in front. It can connect to way more applications. They also have incredible results and they are awesome for getting technical support from their actual community. And what's really interesting with Zapier is they're kind of making some interesting points in like the chatbot arena, which I'm really, really impressed with. So in this chatbot's beta, which I mean, I was playing with this the other day, for example, you can actually come down and we call this guy test, right? Now you can get chatbots in 
NA10. You can get chatbots on different platforms. Zapier doesn't get much love from the AI creator economy, but they really are differentiating in some interesting ways. So for example, on Zapier, I can create a chatbot really interestingly and test it live and direct. I can add knowledge to it. In other words, knowledge bases, like what's all the information I want it to know. I can crawl web pages. I can upload files. I can connect tables. I can sync things. I can apply logic, which is really cool. We can customize the theme, the images, the, uh, the dimensions. And then crucially, we can integrate it with lots of different things and itself connect to Zapier automation. So I like that they're making the chatbot functionality really, really, really flipping cool. Now we can build this ourselves using different code, but they're just trying to make it as easy as possible for brand new beginners. Of course, Zapier itself also has an agent functionality. And I'd say it's probably the best at having a chatbot where you can say, hey, what's the thing you'd like to build? You can explain it to Zapier and it will automatically populate the flow, which is a great feature for the platform. That said, Zapier gets really expensive as you scale it up. The AI agents aren't quite as far ahead as some of its other competitors right now either. Sometimes you find yourself having to reconstruct entire workflows within Zapier. That said, I built a business using Zapier, so I can tell you it is very effective. It's just as you get further down the road, it can be a little bit fresh. That said, I love what they're doing. They're working on different new interesting things to make it as easy as possible. But if you are a complete beginner, it doesn't look visually as good as Make, but I would say is actually probably one of the easiest platforms to get started with on your AI automations journey. So I'd recommend this if you're looking at simple to moderate complexity with your workflows. And for all the reasons I listed out, I have to give Zapier an A on our beautiful ranking system. And our next tool, NA10, probably needs no introduction because they have skyrocketed in popularity, essentially by virtue of AI agents. So NA10 is functionally probably the most advanced that you could possibly use. You could use it for essentially anything you want to. It's got a interface that has a few different key aspects to it. So everything you've seen so far is linear, right? It goes from left to right, it goes from top to bottom. How NA10 stands out in a few different ways. Number one, it's AI agent feature when you're using it, it can actually sit there and you can see it working with the module. So an AI agent, it is matched by absolutely nobody else. On top of that, you can actually have, think of it as a canvas. You can actually have multiple triggers and scenarios running in the same scenario. So I got to have one that triggers when I get a webhook message or like a message or an email or something. And then down here, I could have one that triggers when I get a Slack message or something. So multiple things within one particular canvas. And ATEM is a really profoundly powerful technology. Now, pricing wise, it's roughly comparable to get started. But one of the biggest advantages of NA10 is also the fact that you can self-host it, meaning you can save hundreds of dollars in it. That said, one of the key things to bear in mind with NA10, despite the fact that it is an infinitely capable, it's got really cool modules like the code node where you can basically talk to an AI and say, hey, I want you to do this to the information and you can just do it. Lots of really cool things, a lot of thought has gone into it. It is probably the king for the AI agents. The other thing though, I would say with NA10 is yes, you can self-host it, but it's more difficult to learn. It has a steeper learning curve. And if you're not a coder, I mean, I'm not a coder. I've learned all this stuff myself. It does take some time to get used to, which is why I often recommend if you're a beginner to begin with your makes with your Zapiers and then graduate to NA10 when you get a little bit further down the line. The other thing to bear in mind with NA10 is that if you are doing a commercial business, if your plan is to sell this to other businesses or whatever, you're going to be liable to pay a $50,000 license as you start to commercialize it. I'll put a link down below so you can check out a checklist as when you need to pay that. But that is something that a lot of people don't really realize when you're trying to turn this into a business. So all that to say, NA10 advanced features, steeper learning curve, the one to build on if you want advanced and complex scenarios and you value things like privacy and self-hosting. And with all that information in mind, I have to give NA10 S tier purely because of its capabilities, what it can do and self-hosting functionality. Now, NA10 has had a lot on Spotlight, but there is a brand new tool that's coming out that's on a rise that I think you're gonna absolutely love. And of course, that is the beautiful, wonderful, lovable. What is lovable? What is lovable? What is bolt.new? What are all these things? They are text to code platforms. They let you build applications that can do incredible things. And if you reference back to our power cube analogy you have the ai we have the automation this is the front end beautiful thing so previously we had to code we had to pay people hundreds of thousands to develop things but not anymore not with things like livable the way that it physically works is you tell it the thing you want it to build and it builds it and you edit it by chatting to it so for example you can build things like this a uh, full websites lots of beautiful design that does lots of crazy things like this i've even built a chatbot based on all my knowledge I, you can connect these to other platforms like na10 and make and zapier their webhooks and have conversations with them you can build fully fledged dashboards. Some of the really cool features you can do with a lovable is you can prompt, but you can actually select information. So you have this edit button down here, we can select things and you can highlight the thing that you want it to design. You can also give it commands like, hey, instead of green, I'd like you to turn the color to pink, thanks. Right, you hit that in, you push that off. And essentially guys, what happens is in the background now, this will start to change 
the entire application. And this is text to actual like full development. And just like that, it's now turning it to pink, which is cool. So that's cool. Now the pricing seems to be mainly message based, which is easy to predict what you'd like to do. That said, there is an art to prompting these things like Liverpool. And you'll find that if it gets trapped down a certain way of thinking, it's difficult to pull it back sometimes. So I'm going to put a full lovable prompting guide down below so you can grab that and I can help you on your journey. And the other thing with lovable is it's just complex to debug as it kind of gets scaled. It's incredible for minimal viable products. You can connect it to things like Superbase and all these different storage things. You can connect it to PayPal. I've got videos on my channel about that. So for building out your minimal viable product, it is unbelievable and is definitely the future. The other thing you can do is you can scroll down and actually see what the biggest, like most used things are on a platform and you can use it and then you can actually remix it. So I can take this, I can remix it. Now I can just use this and change the information for exactly what I would like it to do. So Lovable is great for building minimal viable products, for building websites and things like that. But expect to be in a little bit of pain sometimes when you want to do advanced troubleshooting. That said, it's definitely the future. These technologies are going to go from great to out of this freaking world. But for all those reasons, I'm going to put Lovable in the B tier. And this next tool is probably one of the most powerful ones on the list. I'm of course talking about Eleven Labs AI. Well, they call themselves the most realistic voice platform. You can do so many things with Eleven Labs. It's unbelievable. And one of the things that you'll notice is all the tools that I'm talking about can integrate with one another. You can have Eleven Labs embedded in your Lovable automation. Now, Eleven Labs is really good at just text to speech. So you can type in any text you want to, you can hit play and it'll just play like this, for example. In the ancient land of Eldoria. You can pick different voices. That when you sign in, there's a couple of things you can do in incredible features about Eleven Labs, right? We can do text to speech. Awesome. What we can also do is clone our own voice. So it can sound exactly like you and it can do that after only a few minutes of your audio. Meaning that if I want AI to call me or call my friend or be my receptionist or do anything, or maybe I forget to say something important in this video, Eleven Labs can just have my voice exactly. I can write the information and Eleven Labs can do that. It is really, really, really impressive, right? On top of that, if you can see if I can select the voice, you can choose a Jack V2 voice right here. I can select that and it'll sound exactly like me. We've got voice change it where we upload audio and it changes it. We've also got incredible things where it will translate it from one language to another. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Like guys, check this video here, for example. Will this translate from English to any language? And the result, я разработал браузер, который может сделать снимок любого темпа фа OpenAI а рилашату кое-кого кое. In практика, дичева кое. You get the idea, right? Any video to anything else, and in fact, that make automation I showed you earlier is this entire automation. So Eleven Labs is kind of like this the ultimate Swiss army knife of whatever you want to do. Now what's really, really, really cool is these conversational AI agents, which are so freaking decent. How they actually physically work is I can build any agent, I can give it any prompt I want to, and then I can have it sitting on a website. And once it's in that website, it can have any conversations. I'll show you a good example of that. Like this one here, guys, is something I built in 20 minutes. I replicate an entire uh, database. I uploaded for this company, Yorkshire Dental Suite, their entire website to Eleven labs right you come over to 11 labs uh, on this part here you come down to i believe it's in knowledge base there you go knowledge base add document and you can literally add url enter in the url of the website you want it to know about and then you can integrate it really easily uh, once you've built it out and i'll put a link down below so you can check it out you click on widget you copy the code you come over to a website like Liverpool and say, hey enter this code into the website now check this out you see at the bottom here guys need help start a call accept and we allow hey there i'm archer from yorkshire dental suite how can i help Beautiful. And what we can do, guys, is we can connect that to NA10. We can get that to Meg.com and give this voice agent the ability to book calls and send emails and do lots of incredible things. So Eleven Labs is literally, it's an insane voice platform. Now, this itself, guys, in terms of costs, it's around about $7 per 60 minutes of conversation, which leads me on to some of the cons is that the pricing can get a little bit expensive unless you're really specific on the thing that you're using it for. Like even redubbing a video, it's like you need to make sure you're getting a good return on investment. That said, it's an incredibly comprehensive platform, very, very, very beginner friendly. And you may get some scrutiny when using AI generated voice, but it's absolutely, in my view, one of the front leaders in this industry. And for all those reasons, I'm going to put Eleven Labs on the A tier. Now, this next tool is something that's going to make Google Sheets and Excel potentially a thing of the past. Now, again, remember in our framework, we've talked about AI, we've talked about automations. Now, we're going to talk about databases. Now, databases are critical. Now, it used to be the case we just put things in Excel, but with things like Airtable, they've taken it to a completely new level. Airtable is, think of it like Google Sheets, but on steroids, okay? Just like any other thing you have, you have the, you have the titles, you can add different things like that. But what makes Airtable very unique is it's way more configurable. And the way that it integrates with other the technologies like your Zapiers and your N8N and your Makes and all these different scenarios is way cleaner. We can have AI-led fields like this one, for example, right? Conversion rates. You can make it 
an AI generated field and you can just say, hey, what's the thing you want it to do? You can type in like, I want you to get the percentage ratio of this field and this field. And it does it like it knows it's 30% conversion, which is really mind blowing. And you don't get that kind of AI generated AI interactivity in Google Sheets or Excel. The other real key benefit here is we have what we call relational databases. So we can have tabs that talk to one another. It's very good for sharing. You can also embed this in different websites and share it with clients. It's kind of like the foundational data structure. That said, the pricing does scale as you use it more. You get, I think, like 50 to a few hundred different records uh, completely for free. But if you start really leveraging this, the prices can increase quite a little bit with Airtable. Unlike maybe your Google Sheets, which is just going to be free and very, very low on cost. Airtable also has automations built into it, which you can use in inverted commas for free. But it is a little bit more of a learning curve than maybe some of your makes or your Zapiers, but it is within there. And some people do save an automation cost by just bringing it over. Again, think of our framework is the AI, the automation of a database. You need all four realistically. And what Airtable is doing is leaning a little bit into the automation column over there. But fundamentally, you want the actual technology to be the king of what it's at. Now, with that in mind, with all those beautiful functionalities, I would put Airtable on our tier as a C. It does a great job. It's awesome, but it's not so incredible that we need to absolutely ditch everything else. I personally use it for every single one of my automations, but it's a very, very strong, very robust, very reliable platform. Now, this next AI tool is incredible for learning, and this cannot be understated. Of course, I'm talking about Notebook LM. If you're not familiar with Notebook LM, it is really freaking cool. Essentially, all you do is you upload any of your materials. They call it Notebooks, right? You come down here, you can upload a source. And essentially what this does, it takes any material you've got and turns it into a podcast style conversation. Two people yapping about it. So if I give it, hey, I had like a thousand page report from Dudu Dynamics. I can't really be bothered to read it. You upload it and then you can have two different people talking about its pros and cons. And essentially you can learn by listening to it. So if you're someone who drives to the gym, you will you know, you take your dogs for a walk, which I frequently do. I'll soon get some photos of me walking dogs as proof of this. But the point is that like it actually just enables you to learn the material way quicker. As an example, I've got this random website here called monzo.com, which is a bank. I can come down, I can click on the website, I can paste the URL in, you paste it in, it comes in, and then it just turns it into something you can physically listen to. And once you've got that, you can click on generate and respect real quick, you can do some customization things, study guides, briefing docs. Um, time runs, lots of beautiful things. It's a really good learning tool. Now we had Dan Martell do a masterclass in the school community. One of the things he talked a lot about was actually becoming a power user of AI. Notebook LM enables you to do that. It enables you to learn at a gear that other people can't learn at because you're just leveraging tools, whatever your learning style is. Now, some of the pros. It can handle 25 million words per notebook. I mean, that's pretty outrageous, actually. You know, the conversations sound fairly natural and organic, and it's really good for different learning styles. That said, it is less creative than some of the AI tools. It's a little bit restrictive uh, on the free tier if you want to be a power user, and it's around like $20 a month to get started and get using. The tilde are you'd use Notebook LM if you learn best from listening to audio, you have a low hallucination tolerance, in other words, AI making things up, and you have lots of documents, information that you need to learn on a regular basis. Now, for all of those reasons, I'm going to put Notebook LM in the C tier. Very effective, not quite as powerful as some of our other AI tools. Now, chances are you're going to fit into one of three categories. Either you've never used AI before or you've dabbled just a little bit. You're somebody with a little bit of experience and you've tried some of these tools before, or you have been using AI for quite a while and you're looking for the most optimal tool for your particular use case. If you're in bucket one, I recommend that you start with make.com. It's a beautiful design interface. You can get started and actually get building your very first AI automations. If you've got some experience already, I then recommend that you add in some of the other tools in our quadrant, like the Airtable for the database. We start using things like Lovable or Bolt.dev to actually build out some of these applications and start thinking about the interconnectivity. And if you've got some experience already, you want to graduate to tools like NA10 and start really using your power tools and becoming a personal power user, using and increasing your knowledge with Notebook LM and leveraging NA10 and Eleven Labs and these other more sophisticated tools and calls to take you to a level that, you know, you Years ago would have taken full teams and hundreds of thousands of dollars to replicate. And just to recap, you should know the pros and the cons of each tools and when to use which based on the scenario that you're currently at. But there is one problem though. It's not the tool that you use, it's how you use it if you want to use it to generate money, to accelerate your business or create more income. So check out this completely free two hour course where I cover everything from picking your million dollar niche, how you actually build these automations and roadmap to getting your first clients, how you actually scale it, make some good money and make it as simple as possible to cut all the fluff and nonsense out. So click that video somewhere on screen and I'll see you inside the next one.